Welcome to another great episode of the Midlife Makeover Show live on Instagram. These shows are unedited, uncensored, and unbelievably good. I would love it if you joined us on Instagram when we go live with awesome guests and great topics. Just follow me on Instagram at Wendy Valentine or the Midlife Makeover Show and click on the live shows tab on my profile. I hope to see you there. Enjoy the show. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Welcome to the Midlife Makeover Show live on Instagram. Wendy Valentine here. Today, we are going to talk about an empty nest and how not to feel empty with an empty nest. Because I must say, I think it's awesome, life after kids. (laughs) I really do. So today, we have two amazing guests. Uh, Dr. Brooke and Dr. Lynn with Life After Kids, and we're going to discuss how to find meeting, purpose, and fulfillment with an empty nest. Oh, yes. So Dr. Brooke has been working with women for over 20 years to help them live a healthier, more emotionally balanced life. She has eight years of college education with a four-year degree in biology and a doctorate degree. Wow. She specializes in health and wellness and has over 500 education hours in applied clinical nutrition and a focus on women's health, hormones, and digestion. Dr. Brooke, I need you. (laughs) She is also trained in, let me see if I can pronounce this correctly, in the Enneagram. Enneagram. Did I say that right? Yeah. Okay. Dr. Lynn is co-owner of a large health and wellness facility in the Midwest and has been working with clients for over 20 years. Oh, thank you, Rodrigo, for all the emojis. She has eight years of college education with a bachelor's degree in biology and a doctorate degree. Dr. Lynn is a certified Gallup Strength Finders coach. Oh, yeah, good for you. I love that. (laughs) And she is trained in also, God, there's that word again, in the Enneagram. In the Enneagram? Enneagram. She helps women understand themselves better so they can live a more meaningful, vibrant life. I also need Dr. Lynn. Don't we all need Dr. Brooke and Dr. Lynn? Okay, everyone, welcome them to the show. Hopefully, I can do this properly. Here we go. Rock and roll. Boom! Oh, I see you! <laughs> Dr. I'm, Brooke. You're Dr. Brooke, yes. I am okay. Dr. Brooke, yes. Let's see. Awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. I was like, well, if I could just get my words out. Um, <laughs> let me see if I can get Dr. Lynn. If this works out, I'll be so- Oh, yeah. Look at us. Yes. Look at you guys, us. let's just take note <laughs> of all the hair. We are all, all having a good day. <laughs> There's a lot of her hair. <laughs> and I just had my grays colored yesterday. <laughs> so I'm super excited. Otherwise, I'd be like, trying to cover that up. You have amazing hair. But you guys... Oh, thank you. It's said you guys. Yeah. So uh, welcome to the show. And I, I did. Yeah. I read your bios, but we'll start with, let's see. We'll start with Dr. Brooke. Yeah. How did you get involved in doing this with Life After Kids? Well, so we've told this story so many times. Lynn and I have been best friends since college. It's been over 20 years. And about a year and a half ago, it was summer. Um, and we were coming down off of a hike on a mountain in New Hampshire. And we were like, we'd been talking before that about starting a business together. But we're like, what can we do? What can we? And we were just brainstorming and chatting. And we're like, we have all this information. We have all these experience helping women. We've been working on ourselves for years. And we have this relationship of lifting each other up and helping each other be our best selves. Yeah. We got to bring this to women like us, women in our phase of life, women who are wanting to age well and naturally and and have an awesome life as their kids get older. So that's kind of how it all started. We wanted to serve other women, I guess, and build a community. Nice. I've always, I, I get the best ideas. <laughs> Absolutely. <when I'm> <laughs> right? Oh Out in nature. I know. I was like, dang it, if I only had a notepad. <laughs> yeah. I could write yeah. this shit down. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, thank you so much. That's a great story. Anything yeah, I think, I mean, what we're talking time. about today and what I hear you, I've watched your, your content, Wendy, and you're so good um, with how you deliver that message. Um, it's a lot yeah. of it is purpose, right? So Brooke and I were having that conversation and literally her and I had been stuck in that for three years. We're going around in the loop going, there's what's next? Like our kids are getting mm-hmm. older. We have more free time. Um, we're busier than ever, but we're being called, you know, we're being called to something else. What is that thing? Is it time to make a shift? And, um, and so, yeah, in that yeah. hike, it sort of all just kind of came together and we, and it's interesting because our what's next became, you know, that was the mission that was helping women to find that, you know, cause we had been there. We, we could relate. Yeah. It's interesting <laughs> that we all become our own guinea pigs, right? Yeah. <laughs> For like, sure. Wait a mm-hmm. Been there, done that. Now I know how to yeah. do it. So yeah. So you obviously then you both yes. have children. Yep. So are are they all not the quite? Day? We're we're doing this proactively, right? So our kids are teenagers. Um, Brooke, you have a about to be graduated senior and um, sixteen year old, yeah. seventeen year old, and a. Go ahead. You tell me. 17 (laughs) and 14. Yeah. So I have one that's turning 20, one that's 17, and one that will be 14. So Nice. um, Yeah. Three boys. Yeah. So I hope I don't get your names mixed up. Dr. Lynn. Dr. Lynn's on my right. Dr. Brooke is on the left. So Dr. Lynn, I love the word that you said. It's one of my favorite words um, now in my 50s is proactive. So. I love that you said that because sometimes we wait until the kids are already out of the nest. Yeah. And then you have that feeling of, oh my gosh, I'm here all alone. The house is quiet. Now what? Instead yeah. of preparing, yeah. Yeah. which I, yeah, which I think also now that I think about it, it helps prepare everybody. Else yeah. Now. It's so true. Yeah. Because your kids are preparing yeah. to go out too. And I feel like mm-hmm. there's a, like a natural pulling away, like it's sort of unspoken and it's healthy. Um, but I think to be proactive Mm -hmm. is really smart because otherwise you're going to, that the time is going to come, your last child is going to be out and it's going to feel like you're stepping into a vacuum and you're just going to get, you know, get sucked in. And I think that's where we, because we have a lot of women in our community are so lost and it's because they're in that space and it's really, it's, it's really hard at that point. Mm -hmm. It it feels heavy and it's hard to make forward motion. So if you start sooner um, than later, you know, you can, you can be in a better place. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I agree. And, and where do you start? How, if someone's like completely stuck, I, and, and if it's, you know, um, if it's someone that hasn't been working because they've been taking care of the kids and they're like, I don't know what I want to do. Um, I don't know what my purpose is, which is kind of a common thing to think about anyways in midlife. Like, what is my purpose? Um, so where do you start? (laughs) I can jump in on that first and then I'll let, and I'll let Lynn, I think, I think the very first place to start is honestly giving Mm. yourself permission to dream. Yeah. I think that so many of us as women just keep ourselves in this little box yeah. and we just think we have to stay where we are and go through the motions. And many of us, at least in our community, are moms and our identity has been our mothers, whether yeah. uh, mom, whether we've had a career or not, that's still been our yeah. identity. And it's almost like we're selfish if we don't put all of our extra energy into our kids and being a yeah. mom. And so I think that the very first step is giving yourself permission to be mm. something outside of your kids and to yes. do something and to live a bigger life. And that does not make you selfish to want right. that. Yeah. It's, it's a good and healthy thing. We have a lot to offer the word. So world. So I think that is the first step. Um, and then I, no, I that's perfect. I, that's perfect. And I think from there, that. then you need to segue into really spend this time getting to know yourself Um, on a deeper level, right? Because we've evolved, we're becoming something different and we'll hopefully continue to to change and evolve and grow. And I think there's a lot, we have a lot of unsung talents, like a lot of hidden things that we don't even know getting to this age, we don't even know that we're capable of. And so I think that there's, there's, that's a really smart thing to do is to spend some time doing that work, getting to know, like, really, where do you shine? Like, how do you best show up yeah. for yourself, for your family, for the world? And um, 
And, you know, how can you take that now and use those gifts into this next phase? Yeah, very, yeah, very, very good. And plus, I think, too, just trying different things. Not knowing, like there are some things that I've like tried, like after the kids left or whatever, different hobbies or whether it was cycling or anything, just something just like, oh, I never knew I liked that. Yeah. So sometimes if you don't know and you're totally stuck, just try something. I try say that anything, all the time, right? Like wrong action. Yeah. That's take wrong action over inaction any day because it's dollars and time oh, yeah. spent maybe and yeah. lost, but it's tuition, right? It's tuition yeah. for what you're becoming. Yeah. And I, I think too, like looking back over the years for me, like courses I've done, retreats and workshops and nothing ever goes to waste. I always say like, there's no mistakes in life, only yeah. retake. So even if something goes bad, somehow, some way it's going to teach you something and it's going to lead you to that next step, whatever that is. But I, I'm 100%. glad that. Yeah. And I'm glad that you said that about the permission because women, especially we, we, we like to take care of everyone. And then if we take care of ourselves and go, I'm going to do this for myself. And like automatically like this guilt (laughs) settles in like, Oh my gosh, I'm not taking care of, you know, or, or, and also too, what everyone in the family is going, how they're going to react. So again, being proactive helps the, to prepare them like, Hey, I'm going to be doing this yeah. just so y'all know, <laughs> you know? So yeah. That's- well, and to your point, Wendy, just for mm-hmm. any, any moms that are listening, like, and Lynn can attest to this. When I, when I first jumped into this still, <laughs> We're a year and a half. <laughs> my kids give me so much. I'll say crap because I probably get teased or I use another word. But it's ridiculous. Like any voice that I have in my head that's like, oh, who do you think you are? You can't do that. Yep. You don't have mm-hmm. enough experience. I'm hearing it from my kids too. It's like, yes. guys, get over yourself. Like, yeah. This, like, I am doing this and I'm going to put myself out there and you guys are just going to have to deal. And, and, and it's great because they're watching now, like a woman who's coming yes. in her own, who's, yep. and it's teaching them life lessons too, that A, it's never too late, that women are strong yes. and that they can survive if I'm not at their beck and call, call 24 seven. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Know? Well, yeah, I mean, and that relationship's going to change. They're going to look at you differently. And I'm so glad that you said that because they're going to look at you as a woman that's like out there doing something and changing and not just staying at home and like, well, the kids are on the nest. So, (laughs) oh, well, like you're actually doing something, which I think is great. Yeah, it's great. And they, and I've actually seen a shift, Wendy, because originally they're like, no pictures, don't post. I don't want, you're embarrassing. And all of a sudden now, just the other day, we took family pictures, like just snapshots, nothing professional. And all of a sudden my oldest is like, hold on, read you. I need to fix my collar. (laughs) So like, it's like, they're starting to come along for the ride. I think they're starting to take me seriously. They, and they can give you so much crap. I've been witness to that, but they are, they like, they are so like, you know, on the backside, I think it's a guy thing. They're like, my mom's cool. Like I, I, I see it in their eyes. (laughs) Yeah. Oh God. Well, you, my poor kids. Oh gosh. You know, shit. Me taking off in an RV across the country by myself on my video. And I'm like, Oh, I'm like, here, like, make yourself useful. Hold the camera. You know, (laughs) do something. Right. Right. But uh, yeah, I think it's cool though, that the kids can be on the journey with you, no matter what it is that you decide to do with, you know, with your second half and finding more purpose and meaning. And that's, yeah, I mean, everyone has to deal. I think if anybody gets anything from this, it's that you have to have a purpose, right? And your purpose can change and you can have more than one purpose at a time. Yeah. But you have to be going yep. confidently in the direction of something. And it may not even be logical. Yes. It may not be practical. That's where I love Brooks. Yep. Like, give yourself permission to dream. Because at this stage, we've earned that yeah. time, that experience. We've, you know, we've hustled and we're here at this place where it's like, now you really get to help your heart open up and, and let it sing doing what yes. you want to do. Yeah. And I think too, your purpose doesn't always have to be a vocation. No. Yeah. I used to think that I used to think, oh, it has to be something that you're making. I mean, it can be, but it doesn't always have to be. 
So sometimes like exploring and experimenting with things in life um, to find more purpose and meaning, not necessarily going out there to try to find something that makes you money. It's more about what's really going to fill your heart and like fill your soul. And that's what I think. And then the money comes. Like if it's sure. like you need to make the money, like I need to make the money. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anybody wants it? Yeah. Then it'll come. Like I mean, nowadays, of course, you can make money doing anything. <laughs> Candles, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I do. That is actually one of my dreams is to make my own soy <laughs> candles. So. I love it. <laughs> in the RV, but there yeah, you go. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. So I'm curious, what have you guys? What have been your struggles with the empty nest? You want to speak to that, Brooke? I, I, so, sure. I, I think just I, the hardest thing for me is just seeing them grow. Like, really, like the passage of time is thrown right in your face, right? Mm-hmm. You see them. You've spent all this time with them. They've been in your house. Now they're leaving, and you realize how fleeting life is. Like, yeah. it really hits you in the face that we're entering this next phase. And what's coming next. I think there's that for me. Um, I can't say that I really am like the mom that's like, oh, I wish they were little. Like, there are times where I want to hug them. But I didn't do necessarily the baby and toddler stage well anyway. Like, I definitely (laughs) shine in this area, like, when they're older. But I'll tell you, like, the other piece for me is, like, Mm. did I do enough? You know, yes. Lynn and I just were shooting, um, doing some recording the other day, and we're like this, we're at this place where, like, we can't helicopter them. We have to let them go. Mm-hmm. We have to, they've got to become independent. They're becoming independent, and you, you, we need to trust that we did enough, and we also have to kind of start to let them shine, be there when they need it. But that, that letting go piece, I think, I think is the hardest for me. I think yeah. it's that it's, for me. You know? I didn't get to share about my family. Uh, I have a daughter who's 16. And then interestingly, I also have a son who's 30, who works with us. He's, he's also a doctor, works with us in our practice. And he has four babies. They just had their fourth. I know. Oh my God. I'm a grandmother. She's a oh! grandmother. <laughs> so that's a whole nother like life, after, life Our, with grandkids. That's a whole nother thing. Yeah. Um, but so yeah. I have this big space in between Jordan and Lila. And, and so I feel like I've kind of already gone through it once, but yes, the passage of time is crazy because Jordan is like, Lila is older than Jordan was when Lila was born. And that just blows, blows my mind. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's um, I think it's yeah. just, it's all the things. It's like your friendships in, I don't know if that's a piece of just everything we've just come out of and we, with all of us being so isolated, but I think our friendships are changing and that's something we're hearing a lot in our community, just connection with other women. Because yeah. when our kids were younger, we, you know, naturally spent time with our kids as friends, parents, right? And now we're Mm-hmm. We're not doing that as much because our kids are on their own and driving themselves and so forth. I think it's menopause. I think there's a lot to talk about in there. Brooke and I. Yeah. <laughs> what menopause? Like, what are you talking about? Um, yeah. And all the like weird stuff that comes with that, that I never knew about. I'm like, somebody needs to sit you down and tell you this stuff um, beforehand. Um, and, and yeah, so for me, it's those two things. I was just thinking too. It, if you, again, being proactive and kind of start working on your purpose and doing more things that to make you happy, it makes it easier. Like, cause actually like as the kids leave the nest, then you'll go through a little bit of a grieving process. So that does make, if you've got something to focus on, like it did for me, it was like, oh, okay. Not that you weren't sad when they left, but it did make it a little bit easier that you're, you're almost too busy to, to sit there and just like, uh, you know, so be true. miserable. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so good. And, and here's the thing. When I started out and we were talking about giving yourself permission, mm-hmm. when you take good care of yourself, when you make yourself a priority yeah. and when you make having purpose and meaning a priority, now you're mm-hmm. showing up better for your kids and for yes. your friends and for the people you love. Right. So yeah. it's not, it, I don't view that as selfish because of that too, you know, like it, not only does it make it easier mm-hmm. because we've got something to focus on as the kids get older, but we're showing up better for them as well. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So. What do you love most about an almost empty nest? <laughs> oh man. 
I am like, I, I mean, I have my moments of sadness and I like my son's going to college in the fall and it will be mm-hmm. tough. I'm sure there'll be some tears, but also I'm like, this is like amazing. I, I, I can like work out in the morning and I don't have to worry about picking anyone up after school and they can yep. drive themselves. And I'm over here having like a little bit of a bro party. <laughs> it's the travel. <laughs> travel, mm. training, travel. Yeah. It's, just, it's the all the possibilities, mm-hmm. right? Like, so I think it can up. be really, yeah. you can be really scary, but that's, that fear is okay, you know, because just try to focus on the fact that there's so many possibilities open up to us, you know, and, yeah, that that's that's exactly. the beauty and the gift of this space. And and it'll yeah, the empty mm-hmm. nest is here before you know it too, right? And I think well, as a matter of fact, yesterday's episode was about downsizing and decluttering. Mm-hmm. And one of my <laughs> steps is start early because once you know, it's like yeah, you're sitting there in like a huge house with tons of stuff and all the kids all their stuff is still there, the furniture and everything. So it's like, same thing with preparing for the empty nest, downsizing, decluttering, getting ready for like, okay, what is like dreaming about that second half, which I, again, I don't think we give ourselves permission or even think about that. Like, I I don't know, like when I was in my twenties or thirties, I was thinking like (laughs) second half of life, like, I, I, know, just seems so I remember when I'm about to turn 50 and I remember yeah. when I was a kid and my parents would go to like 50th birthday parties and it was like, you know, over the hill <laughs> and the car, it was like, that person's going <laughs> so old and that's me. I mean, it's us, but we have, we have a lot of life to live and aging is really shifted. Um, you yeah. know this and, yes. and so we've got a plan. We've got a plan for these next years. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I've um I've been in the process of writing a book, which is challenging, right. but I've been doing a lot of research on the Gen X versus the baby boomers, mm-hmm. our parents, and how much more challenging it is for us. In some ways we have so many more opportunities, but in other ways it's more challenging for us than it was for the baby boomers, like when they went through midlife. Mm. So yeah, it's um yeah, did either one of you want to talk about that a little bit? Like just how it is for the generation ahead, X. Yeah, I mean, well, I think I, I'll say something <laughs> that my my husband has said to me in the past is I was like starting to think of what's coming for me. And this might speak a little bit to the difference between like when our parents were aging and us now. He says, Bro, yeah. the best thing you have going for you is you can do anything you want. Yeah. The worst thing you have going for you is you can do anything you want Mm. because it can be overwhelming. Like, I think that we're in this space where there's so much um, information right at our fingertips. There are so many new, innovative things that we have to keep us youthful and young, um, which is amazing, right? We obviously, like, we're all looking different. We feel free to dress the way we want, to be dressed more youthful if we want. We're not put in these boxes, but. That can also get a little overwhelming too, right? Mm-hmm. And I think it can also cause some, you know, I talk about this a lot in our community of like judging each other a little more. Like what, like who does she think she is at that age to look that way? And it's like, let's just let that BS go. Yeah, and, I know. You know. Like, can we all just agree to age the way we want and look the way we want and, yeah. and, and be who we want? Mm-hmm. I would say exactly. too, we have yeah. a, like, we have a lot to learn, obviously, from our parents. But, you know, one of the things that we see with our patients um, every day is that the biggest things, the biggest hampers to growing old well is a really a physical functionality, the ability to be able to move around, be flexible. And mm-hmm. I just think that we need to learn that and start again yeah. with our proactive start that early because... Mm-hmm. You know, what is going to keep you in your house at 80 or 90 years old is very different than what our parents thought. Right. And it's it's different. It's Mm -hmm. in the new, you know, the new school of thinking is really cool. Like, yeah, weightlifting is awesome. I love it. I do it all the time, but I've got to do I've got to do some Pilates, too. I've got to get in there and really work that differently. And so just like thinking about all of the ways that you need to move your body in the way that it was designed to move so that we can stay healthy and young and be really vital as we age. Yeah. 
Yeah, there, like I said, there's so much. I mean, look, look at us now. We're talking across the world yeah. on these phones. So there's so much available for us. If we wanted to yes. go back to college or something like that, you can literally get a college education <laughs> on right. <your> phone. <laughs> like it's crazy. Seriously. Yeah. So yeah, there's so many opportunities. And I I used to have like analysis is paralysis. Like I had to have one thing. I'm like, what am I gonna do with my life? And finally, I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, just pick something, Wendy, you know, like you'll figure it out. So and, that, true. and you do, right? You'll, you figure it out. And that also means too, you can pivot. Like, so if you're cruising so along in something so like, eh, like I gave that a shot for a year or two, not crazy about it. Okay, fine. Then you pivot yeah. to something else. Like whoop de doo Like you don't so have true. to stay so with good. the same thing. Yeah. Right. And by the yeah. way, that doesn't make you a failure. If you do right. quit on something and move on to the next, it's not necessarily where you get it. It's who you become in the process, right? Yes. So like those yep. are all, as you mentioned this earlier, Such Wendy, that's all learning. Right. It's all learning experience. And sometimes you don't know, like I, I happen to be a person that doesn't do well with trusting her gut and just knowing. So I'm the person mm-hmm. that like for years was like, what am I meant to do? What does this like, who am I? What, you know, all this stuff. And sometimes you just have to take action. Like you yes, don't know yep. until you just go out and do it and try. And it's never going to be perfect. And you're never going to feel prepared. And you're always going to have a huge learning curve. But yeah. it's also like what you get on the other side of it is incredible. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um, it's funny because when I took off in the RV. And <laughs> a lot I can't of imagine. Like, <laughs> such a blast. <laughs> I'll be back in in a few weeks. But. But when I took, I bought that thing and then I hear, I was like, okay, here I'm 26 (laughs) foot diesel. Okay. And people are like, oh, so you know, like, how did you try to drive that thing? I'm like, I didn't, I just freaking put the like pedal to the metal and just went for it. And the funny thing is the very first time I like had to do the hookups and everything, I hooked up the freaking water, the drinking water hose to like, oh, the sewer. That's bad. Like, <laughs> I was like oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> thankfully, I didn't turn the faucet on. But point is, yeah, yeah leap in the net loop here. And I think it's a lot mm-hmm. about just yeah. trusting yourself. And 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 I re- I would remind myself, I'm like, shit. I had three kids. I raised three boys. <laughs> Surely I can figure out how to do yes, freaking it's RV. So true. You know I mean? Trust yourself, but and, and also it's just yeah. it's all about self awareness yeah. and then like listening to the clues because yeah, I so I'm tendency towards perfectionist, right? And Brooke Brooke would say she doesn't trust yep. her gut. I have to if something's not quite perfect right away, I want to back away. But here's the message: when you jump in and you start something. Just remember, you're not likely yeah. to be good at it if it's something new for you right away. And it's yeah. okay. You've got to get through that valley. Stick with it. If, here's the big clue. Mm. Does this yeah. provide energy for you? Is this an energy gain versus an energy drain? So yes. at the end of the day, are you like really yep. fueled by this? Listen to that. Really step back. Mm. And if it's just a, a matter of the nuts and bolts are just kind of pulling you into the weeds, stick with it. You'll get better. Yeah. You'll get through it and get help or whatever yeah. you need. It's your thing. Yeah. I like that. What energy, energy drain, drain. <laughs> gain versus energy drain. Yeah. It's all about, it's yeah. All, like, it's all about like that. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of kind of going back to what you were saying earlier, Dr. Brooke about the friends. Um, and sometimes, I don't know, I think at midlife too, as things are changing, kids are leaving the house, your relationships are changing. It's a good time to take note of what in your environment, in your relationship, what helps and what hinders. Because as you start to, I actually have a friend that kind of like started off with this new career and her friends are kind of like, what the hell is she Mm. doing? Like she is changing the (laughs) whole dynamic here. They're not liking it, you know? And I told him like, you've got to just keep like... They're either your friends or or not. So sometimes I think as you start to really go after your dreams, sometimes, and I had this happen to me myself, that friends and family are going to be like, what? And you'll, yeah. And you have to still go, you still have to go for what helps, what helps and does not hinder. And if it's something that makes you happy, then 
stick with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. Mm-hmm. We've had so many conversations about that with our community because Anytime that you're working on improving yourself, there are going to be people yeah. because first, you're holding up a mirror to them, right? And they're either seeing like things they don't like about themselves because they're in a place they don't want to be, or you're doing things that they just, they're not motivated to do. And it makes them feel, it, it's the same thing I tell my kid. If somebody's saying something negative to you or treating you in a harmful way, that's yep. usually a them issue, not a you issue. Right. Yes. And you yep. have to just let that go. And you're right. When yep. you're like, if they're your friends, they're going to be there for you and yeah. support you and lift yeah. you up and love you through it and support you. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it too, I hate to say yeah. it, but it kind of flies in the face of like their excuses. Like, so the reasons why they haven't been doing it. Right. Mm-hmm. And, right. you know, and I think that's yep. why people yes. don't right. innately, like intuitively, like step into those spaces, like without thinking too much about it is mm-hmm. because that fear of, yeah, people, when you change your, you know, your people around you are going to sense that and there's yeah. going to be some pushback. So I like what you said, um, Wendy, about just like knowing, like you have to do like prioritize yourself and then, and yeah. if they are your friends, they're going to come along with, and guess what? You're going to, you're going to make new friends on the other yeah. side that are going to encourage you. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. L- like, look, look right, right. here. I <laughs> got the Charlie's Angels right here. And you know what, too? I think it also shows with other women, it gives them permission, like, yeah, go for it. Go, like, be like, we're, I think sometimes as women, we're the worst at cheering for each other. And sometimes, you know, instead of like sitting back and going, ah, you know. But so it's such a great time to be able to support your friends, support your family, and then, yeah, just yes. live life with gusto, right? Well, so let me ask you, then, what do you what do you love what do you love the most about like after the kids are gone? What like what is something that you've always wanted to do that is on? <laughs> Doctor Lynn's ready. <laughs> What's something you've always wanted to do? We're climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, bro. Go ahead, Lynn. (laughs) Yes. What? (laughs) I'm just now learning. I mean, there's so many. That's like that one's right. That one's coming closer than than later, sooner than later. But yeah, I mean, that's I don't know. What else would you say, Brooke? Man, I'm I'm looking forward to being able to go to (laughs) anywhere and just be there for three months at a time if I want. Like I would love to have a little house in Italy and just, you know, like spend time. Lynn would be there, of course, and just yeah. have that freedom and that flexibility yeah. to, you know, really just really, we're at a point where we can really start to enjoy it's, our life. Right. It, and it's just, just such a gift. Mm-hmm. Such a gift. Yes. Mm-hmm. Having more yeah. freedom. Yeah. 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 And really just, I think designing life your way. And I mean, not that your kids aren't still in your life, of course, but right. it's, it's different. You, you can, you can make yourself more of a priority yeah. and like go to Italy for a few months or, or come to Madeira, <laughs> yes. Portugal. Uh, <laughs> on it. <laughs> or take off in an RV or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you know? and back to that purpose piece <laughs> around that. like that, that I think that, yeah. um, you know, basically there's a lot we could do, right? We could go hang out, but we know, and I think you touched on something earlier with this, that just living life for something bigger, like a bigger mission and contributing is I think where it's at. Cause we've done that. We've chased after the material possessions and accomplishments and we've gotten some of those. And at this phase, Mm -hmm. we know that that only goes so far. So like it's having the freedom, yeah. but then it's coupling it with something that's like doing good, doing good, giving yeah. back, yeah. giving more than we mm-hmm. take. And I think that is really like, you know, the next level for many of us. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Good. yeah. So good. I love it. I love it. I love it. Does anyone out there have questions? I was trying, I'm going to scroll back and see if there was any questions, but y'all feel free to chime in. If you have any questions, da, 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 da. okay, I don't see anything. Um, anything else that you lovely ladies want to ask? So I'll, I'll just jump in because um, in some of our work, we talk, you know, because women are always like, well, that's nice, but how do I find my purpose? How do I find my purpose? And, you know, there's those couple yeah. of clues, yeah. energy gain, energy drain, but there's also what I like to say, 
what makes your heart sing? So S, like where have you had previous success? So when you sit and think back in your life, like, and if you are staying at home, mom, maybe you like organize the fundraiser at school and you've got some arranging or, you know, administrative talents, whatever that might be. So think about your previous success. The next is instinct. Like what comes naturally to you? Where are you naturally Mm. being told that, Hey, you're really good at it and kind of is effortless for you. Um, lean into that. Um, and where, where are your needs? Like, where do you feel compelled? Where do you feel like really called to like, I want to do more of that. Like, I don't, I like that. I want more of that. And then the last would just be growth. Like, where do you feel like you spend time and you feel like you're really growing? And then also you could, you just kind of get in that flow state, right? Like when something like time flows by and you just know that you're, you're doing something at the end of the day that you're just, you're really good at and you can, you know, dig into and grow. So, yeah, I love that. It makes your heart sing. I love that. Yeah. I like that. And what is, I think Wayne Mm -hmm. Dyer said, don't die with your music. Yes. Yeah. So good. Which all that ties into your purpose. And right. I mean, for me, I, I, that's what it was for me. I was like, oh my God, Wendy, what are you waiting for? I mean, I had a, right. I had a magnet on my fridge for the longest time that said, what are you waiting for? I'm like, yeah, what am I waiting for? Like, good God. You know, and really the, the only person that was standing in my, in my way was me. That's, that was it. I was like, uh, yeah. uh, I need to get out of my own way. The hell with it. Like, I let's just that. go for it. I love that. So, so yeah. So admirable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and I would, I would just add as, as if we're starting to wrap here is that it's, I think everything mm-hmm. in life is about perspective, right? Yeah. And this, in this phase of life in particular, it's all how you choose to look at it. So yeah. we can choose to like, oh, I'm getting older, like the best part of my life is over, the kids are grown, like it's all downhill from here, I'm aging. Or we can look at it like we are so much wiser than we've ever been. We have so much more experience. We have more freedom now. Yes. And this is like a new chapter that we get to write, and it's exciting. And by the way, it's also a blessing because there's so many so people true. who don't get to this point. I know. So, you know, and it's it's a gift. Yep. To just really like be able to rewrite our story and make each day that we live count be aware of that. It's just to me, like yeah. it, it fills yeah. my heart so much and it excites me. Yes. Yeah. I love that. So true. Yeah. And I've talked about this on the show before, but my ex-husband died at the age of 26 and my oh, bro and my brother wow. died at 49. Wow. So I always think about them. Like I would imagine them saying, if I'm, you know, thinking, should I do this or should I do that? That they mm. would be saying, Seriously, mm. I, I would love to have another day at right. life to Please. just like try something uh, different. So yeah, life, details. life, yeah, life definitely. That's the is best very, way to very honor short. Them too, right? um, like the best way to show them. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So someone says, "How do you get yourself right. out there?" Yeah. So oh, is the question with purpose or with friendships? I think it's really kind of the same. It just comes back to. No, no step Mm -hmm. is the wrong step. You just got to start somewhere. Um, And, you know, again, it's going to not feel natural at first, but the more you do it, the, the better you get at it. Um, I mean, I know that's not really any (laughs) crazy original advice, but. No, yeah. Yeah. Yes. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single (laughs) step. Just like, just take a step. (laughs) Get out there, day. And, and and I would add, add to that too is that um because that's a loaded question, but yeah. here's the thing. I think we tend to want to overcomplicate it and say like we've got to do all this stuff to get out there or to start the mm-hmm. thing. And then mm-hmm. like you said, you mm-hmm. get kind of get paralyzed. So right. for me, it's like what is mm-hmm. the next right step? And it might be a small thing, but what's the first small thing that you can do? And mm-hmm. each step that so you good. take builds on the last, right? So it doesn't have to be like this big launch. Just so do good. the next right thing. Yeah. And again, reminding yourself that yes. you raised kids. Yes. You gave lot. birth. You, so, yes. you know, I know we all like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like three, nine pound kids. Like, come on. Like, <laughs> right. My life is complete. 
so um, true. But no, I mean, like we should remind ourselves of we, you know, it's like almost a common thing. Well, yeah, you raise kids, you raise, yeah, you raise kids. Like that's huge. Um, so we should be celebrating and should be also reminding ourselves of that strength. Just like you were talking about. Is it, wait, was that the S? Success. That? Yeah. Previous said, but strength. Success. Strength. So really yeah, crazy. success. Really, yeah. When we look at that, yeah. there's really only ever been one person yeah. just like you, just like me. I mean, there's never, yeah. you as a person are completely unrepeatable. Like with your combination of strengths and talents yeah. and your personality profile and your experiences. And I mean, those are just a couple of pieces of the pie. And I mean, you have, you, you know, you've raised kids. Like you said, there's so much power in that and there's something for you. It's just a matter of yeah. finding it, getting, getting there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. She, uh, let's see. She also, she said, "I'm a 42 uh, year young mom <laughs> coming back you. into the career world, and I want to be uh -huh. successful." And getting you back into the that? career world. Yes. Well, first, congrats on taking the steps and getting out there. Yeah. Um, what does success look like for you? You have to be. So, cause that's a loaded, like to use Brooke's phrase, what's yeah. success mm -hmm. exactly for you? So get really clear on defining what that is. Is that monetary? Is that a promotion or is that just creating balance for your family and having your kids feel, you know, safe and protected and still like they have a piece of you, a good piece of you while you're putting yourself out there and work. So that's, I think, step one. That's yeah, a very that's good so point. Good. Yeah. So good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is good stuff. Thank you. An empty nest should never mm. be empty, though, right? That's like, exactly. this should yep. be, <laughs> should feel very full with an empty nest. That's yes. what I think. Yes. <laughs> Agreed. Well, where can we, where can we find you? So you can find us um, on Instagram at, at life period after kids. Um, we're on our website is um, www.lifeafterkids.com. We've got lots of great free resources there. We've got a Free video tutorial how to live a fabulous and fulfilling life after 40 and we have our um also um free ageless um beauty workbook and guide those mm -hmm. are all on the website that's the easiest place to find us our blog is there our blog is there we do a lot of instagram lives the two of us really sharing like things that we're going we, we really like raw this is us like what you see is what you get yeah. and we are very raw and vulnerable like we share our own struggles and we share our friendship and what we're going through in this time so yeah i love that thank, thank you ladies so much thank you so much and, and thank you yeah and this will be like i said it'll be on the podcast either thursday or monday but i'll let everyone yeah, know <laughs> y'all know i will let you know i blasted everywhere <laughs> they're probably like when wendy just stopped it one of my friends was like, would you stop putting in a bunch of inspirational things? Because I feel like I have to do something with my life. I'm like, yes. I'm like that's the point. That is the point, <laughs> it. Go. I love it. Oh my God. I love it. All I right. Thank it. you guys so much. Have a, an amazing you, rest of well, the day. Well, you're phenomenal. Thank you so thank, much. Thank you, Wendy, for everything. You're amazing. Ah, you Take care. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to another great episode of the Midlife Makeover Show live on Instagram. Before we part ways, just a few quick reminders of how you and I can connect outside of this fabulous show. Number one, join the Midlife Makeover Club. It's our private Facebook community for all things related to midlife, relationships, health, mindset, and more. You will receive episode updates, interview clips of the show, Instagram live videos, wise words from Wendy, and of course, some wacky words from Wendy. Basically, anything to help you live, love, and laugh through midlife. Just go to the midlifemakeoverclub.com and request to join. We would love to have you. Number two, join us for the next Instagram live show. The cool thing about IG Lives is that you can meet new guests and ask questions live on the show. How cool is that? Just follow me on Instagram at Wendy Valentine or the Midlife Makeover Show and click on live shows on my profile. Number three, check out my Midlife Makeover Method online course available at midlifemakeovermethod.com. In this fabulous four-week online course presented by your hostess of the Midlife Mostess, 
you will embark on an awesome journey of transformation. I will help you discover your number one wish, uncover your why, and get you taking action towards creating a life you love. Over four weeks, we will go through four phases of seed to flight. You will walk away with a midlife metamorphosis.